everybody. Thank you so much for your support of the Cosmic Chats, for your attention and your energy, and just being a part of each episode. It makes all the difference. So if you haven't subscribed before, please consider doing so. The more subscribers that we can get, the wider the net that we can cast, and the more and more people that we can bring in to share their insights, consciousness, and wisdom and reveal that in the universe for all of us. So thank you so much and have a great day. Welcome to today's Cosmic Chat with Debbie Sugarbaker. I'm so excited to present to you a beautiful conversation and practical and helpful that I'm going to have with Annette Halfon, who is a Feng Shui master and a master and an expert on the four pillars of destiny of Chinese astrology. And we are going to discuss some tips that you can use in your home and also with your food to help you to feel better and to live better, to create shifts, to create openings in your life. Because everything that we have in our lives, we can use if we use it rather than we let it use us. We can really start to, 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 uh, to live more in our, our creativity, more from our power and of our soul. So I'm so excited that she's here and we actually just started, but we got, um, there was, I think that Mercury is still in the microwave shadow period. So we might still be getting some of the effects of that. We had a little technical difficulty, but I'm going to add her again and we will begin. Thank you so much to everybody who has joined, who joined us before. And I hope that you join us again as we get started here. I see my, my friend Seymour Coblin is joining and he's another master in this realm. So you can check out our cosmic chat, which is on my IGTV. Yay, Annette, you're back. Yes, yes. Today is a dragon day. That's why it's uh, okay, too much there we earth go. that's pressing on the fire element, which is the internet. So <laughs> let's hope now we can continue. I think we're going to be good for, for now, yeah. So Perfect. as I mentioned, I just gave another inter, um, another introduction for you. And I know that you also have a new project that you're starting. So if you wanted to just tell us about that. Yes, it's, um, it's a chakra application. It's a healing process because I think house, energies in the house reflect the energies in the body. So to make the inner journey and to go inside and to heal yourself is really part also of, of feng shui in the, the holistic sense. So the application, it's a free application. It's called U Chakra. U, like the letter U, Chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A. And you can download it on uh, the Apple Store, on, uh, Play, um, on Google Play, and it's for free. So I really invite everybody to use it to Amazing. balance your seven chakras. To balance your seven chakras. And it's using your home, right? The energy in your home. It's, it's part of that because right. if you feel well, um, then probably your home also will reflect the energies and the opposite. If you are happy in your home, it means you have good energies for you. If the home energies are not for you, you will find excuses not to be home. You will feel uh, sick or powerless or things will not turn out like you would like to. So wow. it's really one reflects the others and you can feel it immediately. You can feel it immediately. And we're going to talk more about that today. Um, I wanted to know, so like, what is it that this is what you do full time? So what is it exactly that you do when you when you work with a client and how did you, how did you get into this field? Okay. Um, there are no coincidences. I'm actually, I'm a master in theology, comparison religion. And, uh, then I came to Israel. I got married, had my children. I thought it's so beautiful to be a mom. And I was a full-time mom about 10, 12 years. And then I said, okay, now it's time again for myself and to do something again. And then I started to learn uh, Reiki. Um, I'm a Reiki master also, and uh, um, natural eating, uh, naturopathy, a uh, little bit of reflexology. But nothing was really that I wanted to do it all the time. And then 
I got the invitation for Feng Shui, Feng Shui, didn't even know how to pronounce it. And I said, oh, to, to learn the energies in the home, that would be nice. That was all that I knew. And I called them up in the college and it was one day before we went with, uh, with all the kids to two months vacation, six, six weeks vacation in the States. We live in Israel. One day before, I cannot leave, I'm in the middle of packing. So I called them up and they said, there are only a few places left in the course. Come now and close now. And I don't lo- like when people press me. So I said, you know what? When I'm coming back, if it's for me, there will be a place. I came back after six weeks. I called them up. There was one place left. Wow. And when so I started you. Uh, learning it, I thought, wow, it's actually, it's everything what I like. It's working with people. It gives such an insight and it gives practical help what to do at home to feel better. So I find it still amazing. And um, I'm very happy. And so when you work with somebody, how do you, how do you work with your clients? Like let's say somebody wanted to work with you, let's say their house is, it's interesting because I find like there's certain areas of my house that always get messy first. You know, yes, yes, um, those things I, I was like thinking last week before I had when I had the idea to have mm-hmm. this conversation about feng shui. I said, Why is it that this cabinet always gets messy first? Because it also feels like it's related to some messy, disorganized feeling inside of myself. Of so course. I said, Let me tackle that and organize it and see mm-hmm. how I feel different. Because it's interesting if you start to see your patterns in that way, most of us were not even aware of it, you know. It okay. So let's start from the beginning. Okay, before I start, I take from the people the date of birth. If they have the hour, it's even better. Okay, then I know the energies of the person. And actually, I need all the people living at home. Because everybody has a part in the home that is uh, connected to him or to her. Right. So that's very important to, uh, and then I need, I need to know for Debbie, um, I didn't write your chart down. When we did yours, it was on the corridor in the reception in the Kabbalah. It was just uh, really very, very uh, fast. Yeah. It was not a, a proper reading. So um, then I would know what elements you need. Elements that means what materials are best for you what colors are best for you. And then I can, in this certain area at home, I can do something good for you to balance you. And especially small children, you just change something and it's connected to their area in the house. They feel it at once. Wow. At once. It's amazing. So uh, I take the dates of birth and then I ask them, um, if I come to the house, I mean, I do also online, but uh, I prefer to come to the house and to see it and be with the people, of course. But I have clients from all over, so they cannot be all the time everywhere. Um, so I do it also online. So they have to send me the floor plan of the house or the apartment. And now comes the tricky part. I need to have exactly the compass readings. Now, of course, I will instruct my uh, client exactly how to do this, okay? Because you have to, you have a compass on your phone. You have to open it and then you have to make like an eight movement with the compass and your hand. Hold it and this is the direction you are looking at. So when you go out of the house, this is the direction I need. Wow. So it's like interesting. So you really use... It's like a science. You use yes. the exact, I remember I was, I was actually about a year ago when I moved into this apartment, I was going to have you help me. And then, you know, things just got busy, but it, you told me to draw out like the North side, this, the, all of the directions yeah. of the house, the way that exactly. the door is that's facing. That's very important. I and mean, that's how you kind you of know. map it out to work with it. Perfect. That's what you need. Then we have to know what year the building was built or totally renovated because the building, the moment it's, uh, it's built, 
and people start living there, it's getting like life. The direction it's facing, uh, it has a certain energy. Every 45 degrees have a different energies. Wow. Okay, so that's, that's also interesting. And then not every house or apartment fits to a certain person. Right. There are people, they, are, they need the Western, uh, West, Southwest, Northwest orientation. And there are people, they need the North, South, East. So we have And so to- do you think that, like, let's say if somebody had, you know, was deal? so let's talk about like specific things. So y- you will look at the individual and you will look at their chart and then you will look at the, the way that their house is mapped up, would mapped out. Would you give, and the directions, would you give, uh, you know, would you say, okay, if you, let's say the person is looking for a relationship, would you give them tips about how to open okay. up a possibility for a relationship by moving yes. things in their house? Or if they were chronically feeling tired yes. or down, so you could Definitely. say like, listen, this might open up flow. So what Definitely. are some of those tips that you give people? Okay, so first of all, and this is universal, okay? This now everyone here can re- write it down and can do it already. The Southwest in every room, in every apartment, Mm -hmm. in every building is the lady in the house. Southwest. Okay. So it can be a corner. It can be the middle. It can be a whole wall. Then we take the middle. Okay. So please, all the ladies, they are listening now. And uh, you also, you check it up afterwards. Take your compass. Uh, check where is the southwest okay so you turn around until the compass shows you southwest okay and this will be a consistent in every room and there you put something that you like that is representing you and there it comes this is also the area for marriage so if i want to find um marriage, a steady relationship, that's the place where I can put my Chinese tux or I can put a symbol of love or I can put there um, two flowers. I can put there two teddy bears, something of two. I see. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be only the Chinese tux. Uh, I also give, uh, according to the style, I give them uh, options. Okay, some uh, people, they, they love these traditional Chinese things. Some people, they like it all modern. And uh, so everybody needs something else. So I give them the options. Okay, here I would like to have something of a couple. It should be in the colors, red, pink, purple, brown, earth colors. It could be two stones. It could be two rose quartz. It could be, so it depends on your home. Okay, so we go really through the house and look at every corner, what you have there and what you can do. What are the possibilities? What are the possibilities for that space? In every, in every house, okay? okay. Even if what if it's, it's a man like living say, and it's a man looking for his, what if it's a man looking for his mate? What direction is that? So we said okay. southwest corner of every room or wall Ladies, just to recap, is to draw yes. is is for for the the lady of the house. You can put two if you're looking for a relationship or a partnership. Yes. You put something yes. of two. Exactly. And what about okay. for a man? Uh, wait, wait, we didn't finish here yet. Okay, oh. so if you have in the house a nice area there, uh, like kitchen, um, living room, bedroom, office. That means it's a great point to find a marriage. If I have in the house, oh, wow. in the same area, I have bathroom. Uh, if I have two floors on the second floor bathroom again, the lady, she will not feel appreciated. Wow, okay. interesting. Now, and the, uh, I just had um, two young men, that was so funny. Um, in LA, uh, one guy, he asked me in to uh, make his apartment and he was a single uh, man. And his apartment was a great apartment, a two room apartment. Uh, and his ladies area was the kitchen. 
So I told him, listen, also to the, on the birth of date, you can see when the chance to meet somebody is there, when the potential is there and the house is good. That's amazing. Okay, so we did uh, what I did. I didn't hear from him again. After three months, he writes me an email. He says, um, okay, you have been here in May. I just want to let you know, I met my soulmate and uh, I moved to New York and we are getting married. Wow. So uh, he's moving to New York. Now I know another man that according to his state of birth, in LA, a single man, that according to his state of birth, this apartment would be great for him. So I told um, him, listen, another one. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, um, I have this apartment here. The guy, he got me, he's getting married. He's moving out. Maybe you should take it. And he says, no, it's more expensive. He was a little bit, um, he took it. What happened? He moved to New York and he's happily married now. Wow, magical apartment. <laughs> One after the other. <laughs> oh Should gosh. make a business out of this apartment. <laughs> wow. Okay, so now cool. for the men. So I have a question. Have men here listening. The area of the men in the house is the northwest. Okay. So also whatever you have in the northwest, this is what if what you as a lady are attracting from a man. Okay. Wow, so if I want to have a man that travels the world, I will put their travel books or a globe. Or I had one lady, she said she wants to have a boyfriend with a private plane. And uh, she has a boyfriend with a private plane. Wow. It's... Very it's amazing. Incredible. Yes. Wow. Okay. So the men are the Northwest. Okay. Now it's interesting. You said the corners that they always, they get uh, cluttered. It was it, in... one cabinet. Cabinet. Okay. But look in the other rooms, the same area, the same direction. Right. Probably you also will have a little problem there or you don't know what to do there. Yeah. Interesting what it is in your life. So that's why they say, why to make order? Because everywhere where you have to clutter on this, you are, you are uh, pressing on something in your life. Wow. That's why to give old things away, to make air, to have us open, to change things. It helps you. you so know, what's your advice? Funny. Yes. What's your advice about speaking about giving stuff away? Sometimes I struggle because part of me can just release it all and keep very sm small amount of things that I just like now. But then sometimes I'm thinking, oh, I wish, why did I give that away? So I wonder, so then I've been holding on to stuff, but then I feel like it's over cluttered because I do have a small space. So what's your advice about making a decision about whether to give something away or not? Sing. If you didn't use it for two years, let's say, you probably don't need it. Right. That's a good advice. Okay. Okay. So and what oh, about for prosperity and money? Okay. That's a little bit more complicated. Okay. Okay. Because uh, there are certain areas that we can activate. I mean, the husband, he is uh, res according to the Chinese tradition, he is responsible for everything that has to do with the uh, income and the authority. Right. Okay, so um, we have to look what we have in the Northwest, at least to have, uh, to make it nice. Okay, and if I put there some business things like uh, business books or to put the office there or something like this, it helps for the income and for this. Now, energies are changing all the time. Every year they are changing. Every month they are changing. Every day they are changing. Okay, like today, the Dragon Day. So you simply, you can feel the electricity takes some uh, persuasion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or other days, they, um, 
actually behind behind me here you see i have the my calendar i don't know probably when uh, i met you i didn't even uh, do this yet i bring every year i'm making an energy calendar which wow. has which has two levels the first level is the colors that you see here so every day i put the energies together of the the year the month and the day when they fit together when they fit harmoniously then i put yellow yellow is a good day when there is just uh, they are quite okay then it's green it's okay today is green uh, when it's purple should you when okay when uh, next weekend we have purple days 16th and the 17th too purple means too much fire mm. too much fire in the atmosphere means uh, people are nervous, people are agitated, they start crying without reason, um, or actually fire. Wow. It might be a volcano outburst, it might be something to do with uh, in the air, with airplanes. Okay, wow. it's so. What, so, when you do a purple day, I mean, obviously, we're always going to have days that flow, days that don't really flow. Yeah. So the purpose is to just have awareness so that you can, it's not that it's bad, right? It's just that okay. you have awareness so of what the energies there is are. A much, if there is too much fire, how can you balance it? Air? No. Earth? <laughs> no, uh, yes, earth could put the fire off, yes, or much Oh, easier. water, water, right? Exactly. What am exactly. I doing? Right, thank okay, you. so on these days, I tell my clients, on these days, you wear the colors, black and dark blue, are the water colors, or the earth colors, like you said, uh, yellow, brownish, uh, to absorb this energy. Mm. Okay, if you go on a purple day where we have a lot of fire and you wear green and red and uh, you're making it worse. Wow. Okay, so also a person that has health issues because everything is connected. Right. Okay. Um, that's why I take the date of birth. So I know how much fire a person has. Right. A person with, let's say, four fire in the chart on purple days. Okay. You drink a lot of water. You watch your heart. You don't do uh, um, sky uh, diving or something like this. Right. Okay, so do you really have a, um, a schedule how to balance? To balance yourself. To so balance basically yourself we, the, and the energies. And the energy. So basically you're giving, I love, I love your way and your approach to things because you're basically giving some information that's based on thousands of years of ancient wisdom mm -hmm. that people can use to become more of an agent in their own life. So you don't feel yeah. the victim of the energies but you know that they're there. And then with awareness, you're able to balance them and manage okay. yourself better. It's another tool that we have in our toolbox. There yes. are a lot of tools out there. This is a very strong ancient tool that you can use to approach your life and to manage the energies into your life and to feel better. Mm -hmm. So just today, uh, two hours ago, I had a lady here. She mm -hmm. came for to get some advice uh, in her life. Okay, I only made her chart. I haven't been in her home. Oh. Um, so that's another option. When person just have a personal uh, issue, they can start with a personal chart. And of course, I give them tips for the home. And later on, if they're ready or they want, or they're moving to another home before they move in and get it organized and pay a lot of money, let me check the house if it's good. Right. Okay. That's, uh, so the lady was here. She just wanted to know. I gave her the her personal energies for the next uh, few months and uh, years to come, where there is a blessing for her, where she has to watch her health a little bit. Um, I saw something uh, could be legal, something, and uh, it was, uh, yes, she said the city of, in Tel Aviv, they're pressing her for, uh, they want to do the, the met they're building a metro and somehow their garden is affected. Uh, so they are, they're really in, so I told them, listen, they are coming. It's coming in the in November, it will be. So in November, I give her the...
the, the tools where to move the bed, that they sleep in good directions, that they don't sleep on energies of legal issues or something like this. Wow. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. also a very interesting. Everyone has, I said at the beginning, there are Eastern people and there are Western people. Okay. And it influences also the way we have to sleep in, what direction, and the way we have to sit facing. When I'm sitting in a good direction, I'm more concentrated. I'm better. And then I also want to have the good energies behind me. Wow. Okay. So it's, um, it's always changing, always flowing. Uh, by the way, I'm doing every first Sunday in the month, I'm doing a Zoom shui, I call it. Uh, it's on uh, Zoom and it's connected also to Facebook uh, Live. So people can see afterwards the recording. And we are looking at the energies of the months, every month. Wow. And I started this in the Corona time two years ago because I couldn't fly anymore. So it was my connection to the people at this. And people, they, I have the same people coming in every month. And each time we have new people coming in. So it's really nice and interesting. So mm -hmm. if the people are interested, just let me know and uh, I will give you the link. And it's amazing. If you, when you were talking about facing certain ways that came to mind, like, for example, I know that like my bed is facing the door. Now the desk that I'm sitting at is facing the door. What, what do you say? I know, isn't there something about that facing the doorways? Okay, uh, the bed. If you lay in bed, the feet should not be opposite the door. Mm. It can be on the side. Yes, that's even good. Okay, there are certain rules. One is to have a solid uh, protection behind your head. Okay, feng shui is always to be protected and to be in control. I want to see what's going on. Right. Okay, so I need um, a headboard mm -hmm. or a solid wall behind me. That would be best. Right. And I have to see the door, but I don't want to be opposite. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's really... You look at the, at the floor. If it's straight opposite, that's not good. Because they say like this, they, they take the dead people out. Um, we don't want this, okay? We are not there yet. So... Uh... <laughs> that's interesting. But what if there's no other option? Because like the other, the other wall is windows. Uh, there's no other okay. option for the bed to face. The, has... the head can be under the window if you are not in an earthquake uh, area, mm. okay? So, and then you simply, you close the, the shutters at night. I see. Okay, so that's all. Sometimes even the bed can be in an angle. Right. Okay. And I, I know that you will, oh, at an angle. And I know that you also said, so for example, I remember when I was working in the Kabbalah Center and you and I were working with the Feng Shui of the building and we went into one of the offices and all of the desks in that office, they faced away from the door. So you said, let's put a little mirror at each desk so everybody can see. So exactly. you can also work with what people have. It's not necessarily like, okay, if you don't have that set up, if your house is, you know, too small. Yeah, or there are little there are little corrections that we can do, okay? But it's always better to make right. it proper. Right. Like it should, okay? If I can see the door when I'm sitting and working, that's much better than uh, when I have the door open, I put a little mirror, at least then I can see what's going on behind me. Right. Okay. And what about so, uh, colors, and, colors and styles in the home? Does it matter? Or is it based on the person? Like, if you look at somebody's chart, would you say that these colors might be better for your home? You're going to feel calmer. Yeah. You're going to yes. feel less anxious. Like, if somebody has a lot of, of anxiety course. or fear. Okay. Of course. Yes. This we have to see the. I mean, it's always good to have uh, very uh, pastel colors. Okay. Or okay. if you want to have bold colors, you use them only as a certain patch. Uh, one wall or as an accent. You don't make the whole uh, house, uh, let's say, uh, uh, purple uh, or something. Fluorescent okay. pink. Yes. Uh, oh, that's a funny story. My husband, he is so sweet. And sometimes he is a little bit too fast. 
when we moved into the house, I just started uh, yeah, 30 years ago. So I just started with the feng shui. And uh, I told him, listen, in my new office, I have this, I had first office, I want to have it pink. And I was thinking of uh, the softest pastel pink I had in mind. And I w went the day to Tel Aviv, I came back and then my daughter, she said, when she met me in the entrance, she said, Mom, are you sure you wanted to have your office in pink? I came upstairs. He had my whole room. I mean, it was a tiny little room. It was bubble gum. Oh, no. The whole, everything, bubble gum. <laughs> The poor painter, he, he had to make four white, total white over this bubble gum to get the color that I wanted. Oh my gosh. Okay, That's so, so everything funny. has to be in proportions. That's another thing. Everything that is extreme, if it's in color, if it's in uh, too much mirrors, um, some people, they need it. Okay, a person who doesn't have a water quality, he might love everything in... Uh, uh, everywhere, water and mirrors and uh, dark blue colors. Maybe he needs it. Right. Okay. That's but why you have are... to look at the chart, right? You have to look at the exactly. individual chart and see. Exactly. And what is the effect? So mirrors obviously reflect energy. I know a lot of people yeah. use them to, you know, they put it near the next to the bed to kind of reflect any negative energies or things, thought forms that people have because we said everything is connected, right? So even if, if people have, you know, you can kind of reflect things back to the universe. Okay, right? in the bedroom, please be careful with the mirror because okay. um, at night, energies are flowing and the mirror is reflecting, okay? So uh, the mirror actually, they're, pay they're playing ping pong with the energies and we don't want to have this over our heads, especially. So I would never suggest to have, when this is my bed, my headboard, to have a mirror on the side. Or I, once I had a client, they had mirror on the roof, on the ceiling. I mean. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. So with mirrors, they should not reflect the bed. Uh, they should not be opposite a window and they should not be opposite a door. Okay. Okay. So you have to play. It can be. What if it's beside the bed, like a few feet beside the then bed? Then it's okay. Then okay. it's okay. When it's facing away, it's okay. 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 That's why we also, we should not have a mirror opposite the entrance door. Because the energy wants to come in, hits the mirror and gets out again. Right. Oh, we can so have it on the side. There's so many, there's so many things to consider, you know, especially yes. when you're working with a space. It's, it's really like an art form. Yes. You know? Actually, I had a lot of people, they said, uh, uh, they had, they asked me um, when they moved into the new house and I told them, listen, this room has the, uh, um, the colors, this and this and this, the, the bed has to go here, the, the cabinet here, the desk here. And then they said, you know what, we don't need a, a designer because everything is in place and it fits. Wow amazing because it, if it's energetically in place it's going to feel right also yes. a lot of design is also feeling and feeling the right intuitively feeling like sensing yes. the energy where it feels exactly. right i mean I there think. are people they have this feeling in natural right. naturally our okay. kids as smaller they are they still have naturally they know which direction they have to sleep wow okay you know what? It was so funny with the directions that the people have. Um, my husband, he is a Western person. That means he has to sleep with the head towards West, Southwest, North, Northwest, or Northeast. Right. I'm an East person. I have to sleep towards North, South, or East, or Southeast. Right. Now, when we move to the new house here, um, the head... The bed was towards the southeast. The room is the east. That means the head is good for me. 
the room is good for me. It's all Eastern directions. And we moved in here and the guy couldn't sleep. He could not sleep anymore. Wow. And he was a flight manager for 35 years. I mean, he can sleep anywhere. Can put him upside down. And in the new house, he couldn't sleep anymore. And wow. he went to the doctors and they gave him this pill and this pill and this pill. And okay, then I, I learned in the Ding course ding. that we have our directions and I found out it's not good for him. What should I do? So I asked my teacher. So he said, okay, balance. So if the room is good for you, for me, you at least the direction of the bed has to be good for him. Okay. So oh. we changed the, the headboard from the southeast to the northeast to just to the other side. Looked a, bit, a little bit funny because at the beginning all the, you know, the, the lights were, they were fixed on. Okay, we fixed it. The first Saturday, we did so. The first Saturday, he usually gets up five, six in the morning. You know what? It was seven when I woke up, he was sleeping. I went downstairs. I had my first cup of coffee. I had my second cup of coffee. It was 9.30. I was afraid to go up to check on him because just before that, uh, my, my father, he passed away in his sleep. You know what? I was oh afraid gosh. to check him. He oh was sick. When I finally come up and he was there, I just touched him and he started and he was finally sleeping. He finally, his body finally felt like it could, yeah. the nervous system yes. could rest and yes. find sleep. It's amazing yes. how it's so connected, you know? Yes. Um, I know I'm bombarding you with questions, but about tidiness, you know, like some people are more tidy than other people. Yes. Some people feel fine leaving a mess. Okay. What do you, what do you have to say about that? And also, if you have any tips, because I, I'm always losing one sock. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Tidiness has, I mean, of course, everybody likes it when the house is more or less tidy, right. but some people, they really need it as a, organized like a pharmacy and right. other people, they have a mess around and they know where the things are. Right. This is connected to metal element in our chart. Mm. When the person has, uh, when the metal element is under attack, then the person becomes <gasps> a metal is the, the sense of order. Then it becomes too much. Okay. Then they need outside the order because it's not built inside. Mm. Okay. Like I have three metal built in from eight, all in all eight. So um, everybody has eight energies built in. So, and we have from the five energies from the water, the wood, fire, earth, and metal, something, somewhere we have uh, eight energies from these five. Okay. And I have three metal. That means outside my house is a mess. But for me, it's organized. Right. I know where things are. Right. Okay. So, but uh, some people, they come to me and they're a little bit startled because, uh, it's not what they expect a, a functional master. Everything is thin and white and uh, I don't know what they expect, but. <laughs> yeah. But it's real, it's real. Else. It's working with energies. It's not about having nothing in yes. your place. For some people it might be and having everything white. That's not about feng shui. It's yes. about working with the energies that you have. Yes, and that you energies. are. Some people need yes. everything in white. Authentic. Right. Yes, and other people, they need everything, uh, wood and plants, and they can live in a tree house. Right, exactly. Okay. And what would you say, so, so for example, with the thing, I, I'm just like, always feel like I'm losing like one sock, like either in the washer, like, do you is that probably related to something in my chart, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Very hard for me to do those I final mean? socks together. Uh, you know what I do with the washing? Or there's I always like this. one sock, like just rogue, like around the apartment, like in a random place, like by the front door or, you know, by the dining room. I'll just like find a sock. It's like so weird. That's strange. 
Okay, for this I don't have a solution. <laughs> I also have a dog, so maybe he takes one. I don't know. Okay, maybe that's the that's the reason. <laughs> and what about if you're living with somebody? Do you look? Would you look at? You know, some people it can be very difficult to live with. You know, you might find yourself in a relationship where you've lived together very nicely, or another one where you it's very hard. You have very. I mean, you can, when energies. I have the charts of the both of the couple. I can see if there will there is a give and take right. of the energies, or if only one person gives. Right. Okay. So that's why I tell my peop my people when you're dating somebody, before you fall in love uh, all over, please send me his state his or her state of birth and then check up how how they fit to you. Right. Or if you're already in that, if you're then okay. If you're already in that situation, you can just yes. look and gain awareness that might help you yes, to navigate the energies in a better way. Explain the lady what her husband needs. Right. Okay. So what she has to uh, to make him happy, and the same um, opposite. When it's a, a man, I can tell him, listen, your wife through a hard period. Uh, you have to treat her like this and like this and like this. Uh, one girl, she needs. Um, she needs um, touch and the massage and kissing and hugs. And other girls, they you have to take her out for for lunch or for this. Or uh, other ones, they need jewelry. We can actually see this. Wow, it's amazing. Okay, because in your chart, it's already there what you are looking in a partner. It's there. Right. Okay, so if you get a partner who cannot offer you this, you will always be disappointed. Right. Okay. I have a few couples like this. Um, mm -hmm. They stick together because they're traditional couples, but they're not happy. Right. So I'm but at least you can gain awareness. Oh, here yes. is where I always get disappointed yes. because of this. And so I understand exactly. the energy so I can decide not to get disappointed. Yes. Yes. Again, it's giving the individual some... agency agency and, and power gives us like yes. you said in the beginning power and control and, because and we then understand you can the work a little bit on your relationship area if there's a little problem by putting the picture of the two of you when you were happy in the in the southwest area right okay to beautiful. make it more beautiful so um if anybody has any questions that you want to ask specifically mm -hmm. about something i'd be happy to answer them Okay. Oh, you asked me also about the food. Yes. yes. Food is also related to the elements. Okay. Okay. So I have a list of uh, um, wood element food, uh, fire element food, uh, earth element food. So if a person is missing the fire element, so I would say, okay, you need more to eat barbecue on the uh, Toasted, red wine. Yeah. Okay, things they are raising the fire or the opposite. Right. When somebody has too much fire already, I say, okay, smoking is not good for you. Drugs, they are not, they drive you crazy. So right. we have to balance. And we, we can balance. balance with everything with food, right. with exercise, with, right. um, with the colors you wear. What is a good food for air signs? We have a question here for okay. air element, people with air element. First of all, it's a little yeah. bit different than a regular Western astrology. It's, it's right? different. Okay. It's uh, air in Chinese is the fire element. Okay? okay. So it's a problem. If I want to enhance the fire, right? then it's good to eat. Um, what is feeding the fire? I'm asking you, what element is feeding the fire? Oh, the air, right? And air and fire. What's feeding when you make a, uh, when you make oh a the wood the wood, wood wood exactly okay so wood is the little leaves that means a uh, row cost could be a uh, row cost is good to feed the fire uh, salads fresh salads are good to feed the fire okay um, then all the um, uh, the wood, it has the sour taste, like uh, sour apples, 
connection de cette uh, sour things they are good mm. and uh, the fire element has more the bitter taste like liquor or something like this Okay. Wow. Also, when we uh, go into the meat, the lamb would be fire element. Chicken would be um, wood element. Wow. Okay. But now with everything they put into the food, uh, I suggest to eat organic. And if you know your farmer, that would be best. I'm looking now for a local farmer because I want to get off the supermarket uh, food right. completely. Have you ever heard about, we got a question about, um, I agree with you on that. We have a question about um, dirt. Like sometimes babies, like people crave dirt. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, of course. My daughter, she was eating kilos of sand on the beach. Wow. Eating. She is earth element. Okay. Wow. So, you're, you're, okay. So earth element. An, okay, earth element, so an earth element might crave dirt. Yes, yes. Oh. If there is an imbalance of the earth, they need the, they need the dirt. Yes. Wow. Do you have any recommendations for living on a slightly busier street? Furniture on the walls that face the road? Elements to calm with the noise? Um, so if you live on a busy street, is there anything, any, any, uh, okay, there then any recommendation? Uh, keep the apartment as as quiet in the colors also uh, very cool very quiet i would go in the dark blues or in the brownish colors i would not use uh, greens not too much um, plants also because they're giving energy we want to calm down okay right. or you simply might with uh, heavy uh, heavy curtains work here. Wow. What about, somebody said, what about those who crave sugar and carbs? <laughs> yes, it's imbalance, imbalance of earth. Exactly. Wow. Okay. So also in my calendar, there are brown days. Where is one? On the ninth. Um, oh, that's in February. It's not, the, not today. Um, where is the actual one? where there is a brown day. On the 12th, we have a brown day. On this day, there is too much earth. That okay. means we are craving food. It's a day that you want to have pasta, you want to eat, drink a beer, you, things like this. And you almost, it's hard to stop yourself. Okay, wow. so on this day, really, we have to, hey, it's a brown day, so take it easy. Make a walk. Uh, don't forget the salad. Be aware. It's really, yes. it's really phenomenal and it's very individual. Like I love these questions. Yes. And yes. I'll just say, because you did look at my chart, this was like 10 years ago. And what I remembered from it was the food part because you said these foods are good for you. It was like miso and greens and things that naturally after 25 years at that point of really like working with, with food, like I really was trying to hone my food and uh -huh. I'm, I'm uh, very sensitive, so I'd worked my way into eating the things that feel good for me and are nourishing, and they were exactly the things that you said. So I said, like, there's really something to this, because, you, yes, because all the foods you eat... said are, like, my favorite foods, the foods that <laughs> I feel good eating. our body knows what's good for him. Right. Okay. I mean, later on, we get a little bit uh, used to some other things, and uh, we get a little bit... Uh, off the road. But if yeah. we listen to our body, he knows exactly what he needs. Right. So I highly recommend if anybody is like struggling with different energies in your life or, you know, if you wanted to create an opening for a relationship or create an opening in your business or to look at um, somebody, if you have a, a dynamic with somebody that you're living with, you can get two charts done or with yourself and your food and your energy, you can have Annette take a look at your chart. I'm sure yes. she can give you practical tips to just help to bring yes. yourself into balance. Yes, the chart is a, it's a good thing to start and you do it once in your life. I mean, you don't have to do it a hundred times. 
Right. Um, then some people, they just want to have a tune-up for a certain problem, like the lady that came today. But we right. did her chart a few years ago. And okay, but and also the, I give every month, I give so much information. Also every uh, January, I give the, the class for the year. What energies we have in the year. Okay, it's a Zoom class. For this class, I charge a little bit, but it's, uh, my prices are usually very, uh, what kind of chart? It's a Chinese astrology chart. And when we do this, then I can tell you also every day the energies, if you have a blessing or you can make money or you should rather leave the, your credit card card in the bag for the day, <laughs> okay, so we can really, really know exactly every day you can plan. Uh, this is something for people, they have a rational mind. People, they have too much. Here, for uh, I'm a rat. Uh, great. So for the rat person, that's an ideal tool. For a fire person or air personality, uh, they might get a little bit startled, too much information, no, no, it's a red day, uh, and they get a little bit overexcited. Okay, so I don't suggest it to everyone. Wow. Who wants right to ahead. have... Who so where can people catch their... your monthly live? What platform? Uh, okay, um, actually, I will put, uh, who wants, I will put you on the newsletter. And then you get every month the newsletter with the link for Eventbrite, where to register for the free Zoom Shui for the information. And uh, you also get the information of what book is out and what is on sale. Uh, my new book is out. That's the... Feng Shui, The Mirror of Your Soul. Wow. Yes, here is all what you can do alone at home. All the what to do in the bedroom, what to do, what's important in the kids' room, in the kitchen, and uh, everywhere. Uh, also, a little bit of astrology is in there. So that's here. And then I have... I think that would also make a great coffee table book. Because if you have people, guests come over, everyone's going to love to read that book and check it out and think about their home. And it's also helpful. It's a great coffee. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. Um, and this one... That's every year I make the book for the year. This is where we have next year the best energies, where are the, um, and how to correct them, what will be in business, what will be health-wise, what will be, uh, so every year I have the yearbook and the calendar. Amazing. All right, everybody, check out um, Annette Halfon at uchakra underscore app. You can see her, her handle is right here in this, um, in this live and check out her work, check out her books, follow her. And you can definitely, I highly recommend getting a chart because it's really eye opening and just gives you a different awareness and helps you to be maybe a little bit forgiving of yourself in ways that maybe you're usually hard on yourself. Why do I always do that? Oh, I have a lot of this in my chart. Here's how I yes. can correct it. Simple, easy solutions. Exactly. Yes. All right. Anything else that you want to share, Annette? Um, okay. So let's look at... Uh, at no, no. Is there month. anything else that you feel before we end? I don't know if there's anything else that comes to mind that you want to share with everybody. Uh, no, I think we did already a lot. Yeah, we did. We covered a lot of ground. Exactly. Thank so, you so much uh, to everybody who joined. Yes, thank you, thank Annette. you everybody. And uh, I just want to give you the best energies for this month, the month of the dog, starting on Saturday. Okay. okay. So you have time to do the corrections. There is one most important thing. Please, the bad energies for the year and for the month are in the West. Check out where you have to rest and keep this area quiet. Quiet means no charging of the phone. Uh, don't put the lamp there. Uh, try to keep it as quiet as possible. That's one thing. Secondly, put there a glass with salt. Just simple salt and leave it there for the whole year. The year goes until 
beginning February. Amazing. Okay. And That's just to just so people know, months. so you take your compass. How do you find out what's the west? Because I know it's west facing your front door, right? Or how no, do you orient no, no, no. the west? That's individually. That depends on oh. your apartment. Okay. You just so just whatever direction is west. And you turn it until it shows west. Okay. Usually the sun goes down in the west. So uh, okay. just to make sure, because sometimes when you have an iPhone, compass, they need some persuasion. You need some... Uh, you have to move it a little bit like an eight movement and then wait. Sometimes it needs until one and a half minute to suddenly to, to, to adjust itself. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Great advice. Thank you so much. Thank okay. everybody Thank for joining. You. Thank, Thank you, you so Annette. much for having me. It was a pleasure. Such a pleasure for me too. So much fun. And I hope to see you soon again. Me, me too. I'll be in touch. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.